So this is what these offers look like. They're not always just from these labels. It actually is from distributors as well. The new way that record labels are doing deals is kind of scary. Now, the way that it's being sold is super attractive. And I am going to walk you through literally how this goes and how I have handled it. As you know, I'm a real music attorney. I've been doing this thing for almost 10 years. And so I've worked with major labels and negotiating these deals for my clients. And the way that this is sold looks a little bit like this. As you guys know, especially on this channel, we are all about music business education and making sure you understand that when it comes to just this desire of signing with record labels and doing the big deal and getting the big check and all the stuff and then they'll make you big stars, that sometimes that's not the case. It can really hamper and hurt your career and it can really have like devastating effects. And we talk about those cases. Now, at the point that you come to me and you go, Crystal, I got big deal from Universal and I need you to negotiate it. A, always get an attorney. Like when it comes to negotiating your really important contracts, really it should be all the contracts, but you know what I'm saying? The big contracts. You get an attorney who can be in your corner and get you the best deal because no one else is looking out for you. I don't care what anyone else says. That's why you hire an attorney. <laughs> Setting that aside. So we come in, we negotiate the deal. We try to get you the best thing ever. I tell you all the terrible things that potentially could happen. You decide what you can live with and whether you want to take the deal or not, right? Now, what happens though, when I come up to you and I say, cause I'm not the attorney now, right? I'm just, I'm a, I'm a stranger. I approach you on Instagram because that's just how we introduce ourselves these days. Hey. Tony, you know, I checked out your music. Your rock band is amazing. Like your voice, you're the lead singer. Like it's really, really next level. I think you are the next big thing. I can see you guys are posting on social media and you're doing shows and you know, I'd love to jump on a call. So we jump on a call or we might even do a meeting in person. And I go, look, Tony, I have connections to get you signed to Universal. And I really think that, you know, we can be doing merchandising and get you on, you know, on these big tours and doing these collaborations because you know who else is on Universal? And I'm gonna name off all your rock heroes <laughs> who I can potentially get you a rock tour with, right? You're super excited at this point. Your ears have perked up. And even if I wasn't offering Universal, for anyone watching right now, if you were offered a deal from a record label, would you be excited? Would you be excited to get a deal? Would you be excited to potentially get a deal from Universal? The answer is probably yes. Now, some of you might be a little bit skeptical, right? Because maybe you've been watching this channel for a while or you otherwise have just kind of educated yourself and you're like, you know what? Label deals are kind of, you know, seemingly notoriously bad and I kind of want to stay away from it and all that stuff. But back to our case study. All right, so, you know, talking to Tony and I go, no, I could totally get you signed with Universal. So what we're going to do is we're going to sign you to our label. We have a special deal with Universal to potentially get you signed. But you know what? It's really based on how you perform working with us. And, you know, we're going at this like a partnership. So I'm going to treat you super respectfully. You're not just some little artist. I'm going to be like, no, we're like going into this as business partners. And so I go, based on my existing relationship with Universal, what we can do is you sign with me and then we're able you know let's say we can hit some some certain metrics your numbers are here we think we can get you to here and we're going to get you more shows and we're going to move certain merchandise and so we talk about all these things that i think that our label can do for you that's quite the sales pitch already because you know i'm like dude i want to come in and i want to help you and like that's just music to our ears right because like, most of us just want some help in general let alone someone coming in to be like, not only am I going to help you, but the idea is to help you. And then I'm going to ascend you <laughs> into universal. So this is what these offers look like. And here's the thing. They're not always just from these labels, which might be, you know, small independent labels. It actually is from distributors as well. What's become more commonplace over the last couple of years in particular are distributors doing deals like license deals. Because one of the things that we absolutely are like, ah, about with record label deals is that the record label takes ownership of your music. It's a tough sell. It just always is going to not feel great because there's, just, you know, it's a gamble. You don't know if the label's going to do anything. It doesn't feel good, but that's the, that's the trade-off. You sign with a label, you give up ownership of your music, and they may or may not do something for you. But with distributors, distributors come in and they go, no, 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 I'll distribute your music. I just take a, you know, chunk of change from everything that you earn but it's just a license. Now it's gonna be a little bit of a long license, but nonetheless, at the end of the deal, you'll get your music back, you still own it. So regardless of who you're talking to, right, this still sounds really good because even the distributors now are coming in and you know, this happened with one of 
our artists, you know, they were doing so well independently. They were getting lots of offers from not just labels, but also distributors. And distributors are like, hey, you know, we'll sign the music 10 years. Now, you know, it's not usually just 10 years upfront. Sometimes it is, but it might be like, hey, it's like five years with like a bunch of options and extensions and all the stuff. And they go and we're giving you a signing bonus, right? That's always a, like something that feels so good. So back with Tony, label deal, we're going to do even a hundred thousand. It's not even a million dollar deal, right? Like we'll give you an advance of $100,000 for Tony. Like that's a big number that sounds so excited, but Tony is a band. So that's something else you have to think about. Just be like, I'm signing these deals for the certain amount of money that's going to be split amongst five people. And just thinking about how that breaks down, the reality of what that means as far as if you broke that into like an annual salary, because <laughs> remember, you're usually just getting paid the one big chunk of change up front. And then they go, but you know, you'll get some royalties on the back end, which doesn't really mean anything. Because remember, the labels, the distributors, they start all acting like a bank. They don't just give you money for free. Tony might be great. You're not that great. And that's not how they do, you know, they do these deals. And so $100,000, it's a loan. We pay ourselves back from the royalties and we get pay paid back first. Now, here's the thing. I'm coming in with label services, including if I'm actually the distributor. And I'm like, I'm going to make sure that we're doing your marketing and your PR and we're buying on to shows and all this great stuff. But again, all the money that these companies are paying on your behalf is loaned and pursuant to the agreement that you signed, they recoup, they recoup, they recoup from monies that come in from the royalties. And they're like, once we recoup, then you get your percentage. And sometimes that just never happens, right? Because like you go along and then there's new expenses. There's a new album, there's new production fees, there's new distribution and all this stuff. Become your own record label, which is literally if you're like, hey, I want to start a record label. Cool, I got you. Understand the entire music business. I want to set up my LLC. I want to do the marketing. It's a lot. So for example, sync licensing, for example, music marketing, it's significantly cheaper than anything you would ever get from a law firm as far as all the stuff that comes with it and you want to make six figures from your music career and you want to do this for real, like I'm going to give you what you need. Here's what this looks like. I'm talking to Tony. I didn't give Tony that big speech because right now I just led with the dream outcome here, which is I want to sign your, your rock band. You're super great. You've been doing this for a while. We're going to give you a signing bonus. We'll help you with your music videos. We'll make like legitimately, we're going to make some opportunities for you. And if we do this well and knock it out of the park, we're going to ascend you up into Universal. The plus side of all of this is that, you know, you have distributors and labels that come in and they're going to, you know, work. They're going to work to develop like newer talent, smaller acts, that kind of thing. And that's great, right? So we don't have to wait. So we're like big stars because at that point, like my, my pitch is always like, if you're doing this for yourself and you're selling and you're building and all stuff, why do you need someone else? Why are you giving up ownership to anything? Anyway, so, you know, you have a smaller label or distributor that comes in and they go, we're going to help with development, exposure, and then we're going to option to upstream you, I use the word ascension, but to upstream you into the major label. And like, a, you're, you're telling me that if I made that offer to you, Tony, that you're not super excited about this. And you're like, heck yes. So what could possibly go wrong? Here are some things you need to think about. One of which would be that, you know, let's say it's for the same contract period. So Tony signs and let's say it is a label deal, smaller label owns the music and then may, upstream Tony's band into Universal if Tony's band does really well. Well, that means you're now potentially being pushed into a whole new situation. And maybe you signed because you're like talking to me and I, and I super believe in your band, right? So like, this is always the issue with like the A&R rep. At the time, I was the one that was pushing. I was trying to get the stuff going and all that. And now you're like pushed up into a huge pool of a ton of different bands that are just like you and you stop getting the attention. So there's always kind of a risk that you're now going to be a small fish in a very big pond and that you additionally are going to lose some of the benefits or, you know, creative control if you had more of that with the first label or the distributor. But what they're doing, especially with the distributors, is that, you know, it's, it's kind of smart. If a distributor has been distributing your music for a while, they have all the data. They know how much money your music has been making, how stable it is, right? So over time, has, you know, Tony's band continued to increase? Are they at least like this? Like all this stuff is really helpful for, you know, universals to then come in and be like, okay, yeah, it makes sense because they're pretty stable. I see they're kind of, you know, whatever. And so that's why these upstream deals work really well, particularly with distributors. But, you know, as far as just like financial terms, one of our issues that I always take is I'm like, Remember that when I'm like, hey, it's a 10 year deal, whether it's a distribution deal, whether it's a label deal, they lock you in up front. They do that because they're smart business people and they go, we're going to lock you in for this certain amount of time for, you know, this amount of money on additional albums. It's going to be this amount of money. Like, so that if for some reason you do blow up and you're the next, you know, awesome rock band out there, 
you can't come back and be like, I changed my mind. You're actually way underpaying me for where I'm at now, three years later. And so part of what we do to make sure that you are set up to not run into that problem is to do things like to negotiate down the term. We want it as short as possible. We want to be able to come back and renegotiate the stuff because you will become a big rock star. But, you know, again, you've now been ascended into universal and they have the same deal that you signed with the teeny tiny record label so the financial terms cannot be as you know favorable and fantastic and wonderful because whatever idea that you had about the universal draw which was the big pitch in the beginning right tony i'm talking to you and i'm like i can i think i can get you signed to universal i think we can get you to these different you know metrics we can get you a million streams on spotify every month and then we're going to get you into universal and so just more of a reality check is the purpose of talking about this but it's also just really scary the new way of doing record label deals has a long tail of potentials and the potentials of all the upside and all the great things that potentially could happen but we're also not just going through the list of just the problems in general when you sign with a record label and it's a really long deal and it's a bad working relationship or nor working relationship and they shelve you they're not actually working your project and then of course things like shifts in priorities and then the you know the reputation in the in the, in the relationship so what i want to emphasize right now for tony and all the tonys out there watching this is that brand is really important i think that you should really consider that too that if 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 i just said to you if you got a deal from Universal, would you be excited? Yeah, and it's because Universal has a great brand tied to it and, you know, an expectation of opportunity and who knows what could happen. And I just think about that for yourself as well, as far as yourself as a brand, as a band, as an artist, as a music producer, and how important that really is for maybe even a Universal to want to come and sign you one day, right? It's the perception of what you can do what you're already doing, what you could potentially do. I just am always going to go back to just making sure that you build yourself up because at a minimum, allow me to come in and negotiate an awesome deal for you because you hustle and you put out your social media and you put out great content. And if a song doesn't hit, cool, move on. Come up with something else. Like you, you have genius in you and most of the time it just hasn't been unleashed. And I truly believe that even for myself, even for my own music career. I just, I love music. I've done music since I was four years old. I will do it until... I'm a little old lady. We're making it happen. And along the way, just make sure you learn the music business. And that's the purpose of what we do on this channel. And of course, if you do want to deep, you know, deep dive and all the things, if you want to hire me, you can. If you want to go and DIY, I have a music business course, become your own record label, literally learn how to do this stuff yourself. Because all the all that I'm saying is don't be like, I will never sign with a label. You don't even have to do that. Just say, I'm going to build myself up, learn how to do this so I can make my own money. And then if you are self-sufficient, you just have options and you can decide to stay independent. You can decide to partner with a label, with a distributor, and you'll just be aware of what's what when those opportunities come. I'll see you guys on the next one.